military people, and they have uh, developed what they call the solar liquid power, which is a kind of nano solution of a liquid that was launched to the International Space Station in 2016 uh, in a box with many other experiments, and it has shown uh, capturing of radiant energy 3 watts per 100 centimeters squared. Uh, out of nothing in space. So this type of liquid that can be sprayed on, on any surface uh, can generate electrical energy which in connection to our uh, development of wireless energy transmission can provide freely uh, useful energy for electronics uh, at least in internal uh, areas in the future. The efficiency Solar liquid power is more than 40%, so it also captures infrared and ultraviolet, so it can work more than 7 up to 10, 11 hours uh, per day. In, in, it captures more than the, the visible spectrum of, of light. So, uh, we are here on a Transhumanist conference. Uh, in the morning, I have told that. Uh, my perception about plan A, plan B, plan C towards immortality is a bit different. I have another plan, I call it plan E, plan EI, which deals with the science of energetics. So understanding the phenomenon of uh, free energy, we need to understand what Tesla called the amplification effect, and it's, uh, it is uh, the effect of phenomena of resonance of uh, wireless energy transmitting antennas with the ambient media. <laughs> Tesla talked about the existence of a all pervading universal medium. Uh, he called this ether. Today, cosmologists call this dark energy, zero point energy, vacuum energy. We can have many names, uh, but there are quite a few holes in physics that still need to be explained. So, if we want to observe, uh, infinite being, that is uh, immortality, we need to relate uh, to this uh, force field. Life is a force. So uh, I have put here three uh, great problems of civilization. Uh, today I call this the three Fs. Uh, fuel, uh, pharmaceuticals, and food. So, our basic human perception is really uh, focused on densified matter. We take out com combustion, uh, we take out oil from the ground, then we burn it in our combustion engines. Somebody has to monopolize this, but none of this is really necessary. Maybe not 100 years ago, but already 50 years now. So, our perception is erroneous, even if uh, even our science tells that energy comes from matter, but essentially all matter manifests from this energy field in a harmonic resonance uh, pattern with certain geometric uh, laws. And so, in our research, we try to deal with this erroneous perception uh, to provide a new way of distributing and generating energy. And uh, in the third pillar of our research, the development that deals with energy medicine, we show that human beings are energetic uh, beings and that uh, we provide a number of technologies that are able to analyze and even potentialize uh, the human, human energy field. Here you can find a design of a of a kind of a wireless energy variable. Maybe we can put a small video, please. Thank you. So we work with antennas. This is the smallest prototype. I have two wearable receivers. One powers LED lights, one powers a voltmeter that is powered through the transmitter. So we have 20 volts, 5 volts 
up to half a meter, this is good enough to recharge your cell phone. So this is resonance-based transmission. Some of us uh, have uh, in our cell phones inductive chargers. This needs to have contact. Uh, please continue with the PowerPoint. Thank you. So this is a smaller transmitter. We have others larger than three meters. Uh, so we're working and we're very close <coughs> to transmitting energy to small drones that we can transmit potential useful for electric motors for drones up to two meters distance and electronics uh, 10 meters. So in terms of, of food, um, we are observing really with uh, many uh, research publications and groups also in Brazil uh, that deal that we deal with longevity and spirituality and psychic phenomena. Uh, the same idea of reducing dependency on matter can provide longevity in terms of, of uh, alimentation. So, uh, the most important experiment that shows us really that there exists a, a type of force field that does work, physical work, it's called the Casimir effect. So if you go to the university and you talk about free energy, you show the Casimir effect. Basically you put two metal plates, aluminum plates, uh, at a molecular distance and they will show an attractive force. So there is a force doing work out of nothing, no fuel. Uh, there is a, a simple explanation. They call this vacuum energy, but it is uh, still and not explain how we can use our refrigerators to tap uh, into, into this, this power. Uh, so, our <coughs> research institution is connected to, to many others in the world. For me to, to explain uh, really my, my vision of Plan B, which is energy information, I need to collaborate some evidence. So these are photos of a Japanese lab called Kobayashi Biophoton Lab. Uh, basically you put the human being in a completely dark room and you capture via a biophotonic camera, this is not a thermal camera, a very sensitive CCD uh, that captures bioluminescence. Um, this is uh, used to uh, diagnose uh, cancer. So, uh, the important phenomenon here is the emission of biophotons and a type of bioluminescence that the human bodies uh, emit. We are made of light. In our quest for um, analyzing psychic phenomena, and I have uh, been involved in, uh, in the whole planet with a number of, of uh, superhumans. Uh, these, these people have a number of abilities without the use of technology, which are natural, such as psychic, uh, clairvoyance, uh, ability to uh, see the future, see the, fa uh, see the past in the mind. We try to analyze uh, with technology, biophotonic technology, how does this happen? And what is the peculiarity of the energy field of this type of humans? And uh, here we use the understanding of the concept of the human biofield as an energetic matrix that surrounds uh, the human body. This biofield is not particular to humans since all living things possess it, uh, animals, plants, and uh, foods. For us to uh, reach immortality in, in terms of science of energetics, um, we need to break the laws of physics. And obviously, the idea of free energy uh, has to break laws of thermodynamics. So there are a number of Nobel Prize winners, such as, I will quote, Ilya Prigogin, uh, who worked on uh, non-equilibrium uh, equations in, in living systems.
systems that demonstrate certain uh, demons in physics and I can say uh, for sure that every living thing, every living being, everything that vibrates and moves uh, has to tap into this uh, free energy field. Uh, without it, there would be no life. So, uh, focusing on these words of Nikola Tesla, all perceptible matter comes from a primary substance or the new ATP on conception, filling all space, the kasha or luminophilus ether, which is acted upon uh, the life giving prana or creative force, uh, calling into existence in never ending cycles all things and phenomena. And so, uh, we are energy beings. Uh, we have discovered, based on traditional Chinese medicine, uh, energy fluxes in our body. Uh, we can, with external force fields, reduce the necessity of uh, involving material food uh, in organisms and uh, provide living, living uh, uh, conditions for humans. I have personally passed through some conditions with uh, more than a week without food. I know some humans that live uh, in Brazil not in cities, but in beautiful nature landscapes that uh, now completely are, are not eating food, they may be ingest some liquids and, uh, and this is one, one important point for, for longevity. So, I will now quote uh, a famous German biophysicist, Fritz Albert Bock. The organism is a light being, that is why it is theoretically possible for an organism to give up a physical food. This is very important for our changing perception uh, of material density and the evolution uh, of our uh, energy, energy beings. Even Nikola Tesla in his <coughs> famous article talking with planets where he hypothesized colonization of other worlds understood that we do not have resources in terms of space colonization to free uh, animals and uh, sacrifice animals and that uh, science of energetics can transform this uh, complicated process. I will point out this very important experiment by uh, Professor Blair Petrovich Kazanchev. Uh, he died some years ago, but uh, he founded our partner institution in Novosibirsk in Siberia which is called Institute for Cosmi Cosmo Anthropoecology. This is a Russian cosmist school that I am part of. So this research was done in the 70s and 80s and uh, is based on the Russian psychotronic weapons program and shows uh, a type of electromagnetic disease transmission. So we work with antennas, we can transmit energy uh, potential at a distance, do action at a distance, and we observe on a cellular level a capacity of transmission of information. So this is an experiment where you have a cell culture uh, that, that um, is not infected and in fact the same cell culture infected with the wires and a physical barrier. So there is no contact in between that, that can enable uh, transmission of disease. But if you put uh, an ultraviolet uh, a screen that can only uh, permit ultraviolet photons uh, to pass, at some point of time the other cell culture will capture the disease information from the infected one. Uh, unfortunately, uh, <laughs> some of this knowledge has been lost after the fall of the Soviet Union, but uh, this is probably the most important phenomenon uh, to explain uh, what, what I will talk about now. This is the same research institution, my partner Dr. Alexander Trofimov is showing what we call the Kuzirin Miro. It's a simple aluminum construct that is used to potentialize 
the psychic power that this human antenna transmitting and receiving potential of sensitive, sensitive humans. So, uh, this is uh, actually creating a hypomagnetic chamber that reduces uh, the Earth's electromagnetic field potential 600 times. It's the only institution in the world, this is federal Russian institution, that is the government of Spain, that deals with research of telepathy in a scientific method. So, statistics here show uh, transmission of information in symbolic uh, images at distances of 2,000 kilometers in between uh, two groups of sensitives uh, in, in Siberia to really uh, uh, prove that there is this uh, type of non-local and a, te a temporal uh, uh, type of transmission of information. So, what is most interesting is that uh, many times the receiving groups have received these symbolic messages at least a week before they were sent. So, I say now, uh, the quantum field, whatever you, you can call it, is non-local and atemporal. That is, uh, time does not exist within this, this phenomenon. So, our focus in terms of uh, energy medicine is really in Brazil providing a platform for integrated analysis of the human biofield where we develop new technologies based on the Russian technologies to certify certain holistic methods that are based on wellness ideas and longevity, longevity and uh, develop new technologies capable of altering the human biofield and implement this uh, technologies in types of holistic habitation and also using uh, 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 wearables. This is one of these devices, we call this Tesla Bill. It is based uh, on the method of the great uh, uh, Dr. Konstantin Korotko. Uh, this is called gas discharge visualization. And uh, this method is interesting because we can visualize uh, the human energy field. It is, it is based on uh, high frequency uh, discharges and fingers that are connected to uh, the whole body through energy meridians. The calculations is then uh, understanding Chinese and Korean traditional uh, medicine. What is, what is interesting here is that in the energy body we see this equilibrium of uh, 52 parameters and we use this to uh, diagnose illness before it comes physical illness. Therefore, our perception of a human being as only a biochemical con uh, construct is completely uh, erroneous. First comes energy and through information and uh, harmonics Becomes, becomes what we are physically. So here we have some ideas on how we want to evolve this software to accompany what happens to the human body uh, field through uh, perceivable time. And here we have some uh, result. In the inner circle we, we do a measurement before and after a type of treatment. Here we use the solution of nano uh, particles of gold. So here we have 15 minutes later a capture of the biofield that shows a greater, a greater glow. So I work with antennas. Uh, I have evidence that human beings are also antennas. 24 hours a day we are immersed in our electromagnetic environment and also uh, non electromagnetic. We are walking antennas. Uh, we respond and our health responds to uh, various types of geomagnetic disturbances and also uh, solar uh, weather. So this type of uh, field of biocommunication and bioinformation, bioelectrodynamics, dynamics and uh, findings of these are important steps in understanding how the process of uh, harmonization and cure 
of, of disease processes uh, that can be applied. So, I have also already told I am a cosmist uh, and uh, part of uh, Russian cosmism ideas has been brought by the great scientist uh, Vladimir Vernadsky. So, I research the involvement of the human energetics with the uh, global energetics. The ideas of this have come from the vision of Nikola Tesla, the creator of a global uh, energy transmitting resonant uh, system. So, uh, this is uh, 1926 from the book of Vladimir Vernadsky, uh, Biosphere, where he uh, presents the noosphere idea as a, as a process of evolution of humanity. So I have put these three important points of the paradigm of the noosphere of Russian cosmism, that there exists a common laws of a cosmoplanetary geoecosystem, system and that human beings uh, have a, a type of energy and information exchange with the planet and that we are uh, in a process of collective evolution uh, of mankind. So this is all based on the phenomena in the West that uh, Dr. Rupert Sheldrake has, has uh, uh, shown that we call morphic resonance. It involves the influence of like upon like and patterns of, of activity and subsequent similar patterns of activity and an influence that passes through or across space and time from past to present. It shows electromagnetic field interactions with biological systems and also, uh, importantly, quantum coherence in, in living systems. So here uh, we have some words also of Nikola Tesla from his uh, uh, article Man's Greatest Achievement, 1907, where he talks about this force field, he called this Akasha, or luminous, uh, luminophilus eater. Uh, today, these ideas are revived by, by Baum and uh, Dr. Harold Putkov of Arizona uh, Consciousness Studies Group uh, explains really that even our memories uh, are exogenous, so our brains are types of re receivers and that we only have some kind of uh, temporal, temporal memory. This more, even more proves that uh, we are antenna. So, working on evolving all these ideas uh, in terms of, of energetics, we uh, show the possibility of uh, evolution in, in human systems, the recognition, clairvoyance, and telepathy as natural potential of a human being can be uh, evolved using technology in our focus of, of analyzing superhuman possibilities we want to replicate these uh, abilities with uh, types of antennas and technologies I have been uh, I have seen many groups all over the world shamanic practices that deal with healing energy medicine they cure whatever medicine cannot cure uh, uh, today. So we need to understand this phenomena and replicate this natural ability with uh, a technology, wearable technology. In this sense, I see as a future uh, to this uh, a potential. Uh, so the same uh, phenomena of uh, uh, free energy that involves the amplification of uh, the resonant transmission signals in dealing with the ambient um, show in our laboratory uh, in various uh, prototypes uh, uh, coefficients of uh, performance that is efficiency greater than 100% we have measurements Paolo, uh, we can transmit maybe 
up to 360 meters depending on, on atmospheric conditions, uh, energy to uh, electrical vehicles, electric flying vehicles, this is a reality. It is still not earth resonance and free energy everywhere as Tesla uh, thought. So, in terms of uh, artificial intelligence, I see a huge uh, potential of um, really giving uh, robots what humans have uh, in terms of consciousness and, and, its, and their connection uh, to the uh, atmospheric field. Um, we provide development to various types of sensors that are able to detect these uh, phenomena. Future-wise, robots will become even more human and have these types of natural potential uh, that, that superhumans uh, uh, have. So, here I provide a kind of a futuristic vision in connection between the cybersphere, technosphere, and osphere uh, with using of these non-local Phenomena where we can have interfacing in, in between uh, superhumans, uh, human AI uh, combinations, and, and robots involving uh, telepathic uh, connection. Everything powered by a planetary free energy resonant uh, network. So we have a certain problem in providing commercialization and building greater prototypes. Investors say, but how does this uh, work and it, it, how, does it, uh, how much does this cost for kilowatt hour? And I say, it cannot be measured, it is freely available. Even if you find a way uh, to inhibit this, uh, a guy from Favela will hack this. So there is really no way other than uh, government slices this technology and maybe providing a type of tax in the locality that has to use free energy wireless and transmitted. Nikola Tesla, father of radio, remote control and even robotics with his first uh, remote control boat, has said here is the first teleautomaton, so he called robot teleautomaton, that will do work and heavy work for humans. So I'm promoting uh, a new uh, movement. I want to be involved uh, in, in uh, abolishing human labor, so whatever uh, gives us this uh, push to angularity uh, that can reduce suffering of humans worldwide <coughs> in terms of, of heavy labor uh, is, is very important. Um, so this is the last slide. I call this nosphere like force. Every living system, everything that is manifesting adheres to the same principle, energetic principles of condensation. We can find this in planetary formation. Uh, there are some problems in cosmology on uh, really how, how does the universe work and where does the energy come from. There are problems in calculation, uh, but uh, the <coughs> same phenomena uh, that involve the standing wave that is emitted by Tesla antennas is observed in the uh, macro, on the macro level, in planetary formation. And these are some things that I'm telling the first time at this uh, event. So, um, there are already publications that deal with these problems in physics. Uh, there are Maxwell demons uh, being broke by photonics on a, on a mac micro level in laboratories. We are here dealing with breaking of Maxwell demons on a macro level in a, in a lab uh, size environment. So, this is mostly true, what Tesla has written. Uh, we now know more. Obviously, it is now collaborated by hundreds of research papers in the last 30 years. So, I, I don't know how much time I have like more. Maybe to leave some, some questions. Should we? I'll leave for some questions. Yeah. Right. 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 Right.
we have a couple of comments for questions. So do we have any questions here for Boris? Will you please extend a little more about this stationary waves? You, you, you've talked about stationary waves at the end of your... Stationary waves, okay. So, um, these are longitudinal electromagnetic waves 